Join me while I visit some of Ho Chi Minh City's most vibrant, interesting markets and their off-the-beaten-path neighborhoods, digging deeper into the local culture and exploring some of the less visited sites of this amazing city. I'm John Sabot, and these are my Far East Travels. I'm at the Tandon Market in District 1 for this video and the traditional market series. Actually, it's right on the border of District 1 and District 3. Have you heard that saying about where you should stay in Ho Chi Minh City or what you should do in the different districts of Ho Chi Minh City? You're supposed to party in District 1, sleep in District 3, eat in District 5, and get robbed in District 4. Now, uh, I'm really not sure if that District 4 thing they made up is all that relevant anymore. I think it's a lot safer than maybe at one time. As far as staying in District 1 or District 3, sleeping in either one, I think the margin is really narrowing as far as noise level. That's why they say to sleep in District 3 and there's just more stuff in District 1. But if you are in either one of those districts, I think this would be a really good market to visit because it's probably one of the most local markets in District 1 or local feeling market. This is not a real tourist market. Actually, they really specialize in textiles in this market. It's very interesting. So, uh, oh, by the way, yeah, the District 5 food is amazing. You have to eat in District 5 if you come to Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, but the food's fantastic everywhere, by the way, just so you know. Uh, let's go check out this market. The Tendon Market was constructed by the French in 1926, but it existed much earlier, as far back as 1870, known to locals as Fu Hoa Market. This truly sits in one of the most historic spots of Saigon with the famous Tan Din Pink Church and Old European Cemetery Turn Park close by. We'll check out both those sites later in the video. The facade is absolutely stunning and particularly impressive looking with the late afternoon light. There is a certain colonial vibe to this building, of course, that to me just feels warm and charming. The people are pretty nice too. This market has a huge selection of textiles along with other everyday goods, a very well-liked food court, and the usual wet market with a selection of stalls selling the bounty of Vietnam and some imported goods too. Actually, there are several shops around the market area that sell silk and other fabrics. Do you want to be in my video? Hello, I'm be Sook Oh, coming moon mooncakes. Yeah, yeah, great. Oh, uh, toy and chai. Oh, toy and chai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, come on, come on. <laughs> so, um, you know, people are really friendly here. They just offered me uh, some mooncakes, but I told them that I was vegetarian, so I didn't like. They, usually, they offer the ones with the egg. Um, <laughs> what you do have to remember though, you come to these markets, people are really friendly. They're also extremely good at sales and retail. So, I mean, you could be talking to them for a bit and all of a sudden they're bagging up something that you showed an interest in. For the best experience, visit Tandin Market between 9 and 11 a.m. when the wet market is in full operation along with the majority of stalls offering food. Like any neighborhood or market in Vietnam, it has its share of characters too. <laughs> you know, I have to say that it's, it's so refreshing, it's so nice to stay or live in a country like Vietnam and, and not feel weird when you tell somebody you're 
vegan or vegetarian. They're totally accepting of it. Of course, it really does help that you know, the majority of the population is Buddhist. Uh, so when you visit most Buddhist countries, if you say you're vegan or vegetarian, they totally respect it and accept it. Um, and and it's, it's so nice to not feel kind of uh, made to feel like different or weird or anything. One of the many things I love about Vietnam. This little stand selling coconuts looked pretty friendly, so I decided to hang there for a few minutes. <laughs> I think it's time to get social here and have a coconut. Very good. Yeah, well, good. Oh, it's so good. You can speak French? Do you, do you speak, uh, do you speak uh, better French than English? Yeah. Oh, why? I study. I study my my my, uh, my school. Okay, you study your school, so you study more French than English. You French and English. French and English, but you yeah. say you're better at French. Yeah. Oh, good, good. I study French. Uh, uh, oh, since you're little. Oh. You'll notice there are more people that can speak some English in this market compared with others in the series. Even if the shop owner can't speak English, there's usually someone close by that's willing to help. There's a pretty extensive selection of traditional dishes at the market's food court, but on this visit, I'm just doing a little shopping before I move on to Le Van Tam Park, the old European cemetery, and later relax with a coffee and listen to the pink church bells at noon. Got one more thing I want to do, and that's to get a pink pomelo <laughs> to much? have for the upcoming Mid-Autumn Festival. Sixty-five for one kilo? How much does that weigh? Uh, <laughs> Hundred and thirty. Hundred and thirty? Yeah. Can you give it to me for a hundred? Yeah. One twenty? Okay. One twenty. One twenty. I used to buy the small pomelos in Taiwan. Uh, they were wonderful, just the small ones. But you know, you buy some of the especially small ones there. They're like um, almost the same price for one of these big ones here. So I feel pretty good. And uh, this is uh, traditional. This is. Um, what uh, a lot of people will have uh, for the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is coming up at the Moon Festival. Just a couple of blocks from Tan Din Market sits a little oasis from the buzz and hectic atmosphere of Ho Chi Minh City, Le Van Tam Park. This area was originally established by the French and known as the European Cemetery. It was a resting place for French soldiers, high-level government officials, and leaders of the South Vietnamese government. It was the most famous French cemetery in Saigon. In 1983, as the city was growing rapidly, the government decided to turn the cemetery into a park. Anyone with family members that were buried here were notified and instructed to make arrangements to have their remains buried elsewhere within two months. The cemetery was renamed Le Van Tam Park after a hero and young revolutionary of the Indochina War. In 1946, Le Van Tam, a young revolutionary soldier, was said to have destroyed a French fuel store by deliberately soaking himself with gasoline and turning into a human torch before jumping into a fuel storage container. This statue in the center of the park was placed in his honor. Many years later, it was discovered that Le Van Tam, in fact, was a made-up figure by a propaganda minister proven by a professor of Hanoi National University in 2005. The French fuel store was destroyed by revolutionary soldiers in 1946, just not necessarily by anyone named Le Van Tam. There's time to walk and reflect on the history of this park, and although Le Van Tam was a fictitious figure in this story of the fight for independence, the sacrifices and suffering many people did endure in the struggle collectively was very much real. Moving on, there's one more interesting experience that you shouldn't miss in this neighborhood, and that's having a coffee and gazing at the Tan Din Church while listening to the bells at the top of the hour. Right across the street from the Pink Church is a Kong Cafe, the famous Vietnamese coffee chain known for their Viet Cong atmosphere and frozen coconut milk coffees and drinks. They are addictive, believe me. They have a third floor outdoor deck that makes a perfect spot to view and take in the sounds of the church. Um, my, you can 
called me Moon. Moon? Yes. Oh, wow, great name. <laughs> How long have you worked here for? I worked here for about one year. Yes, and I really love this job. First shop just opened at uh, about one year, and I worked here from its open. Oh, th so this one's only open one year? Yes, right. <laughs> this have a beautiful view. Best view. Pink, pink truck. So now I'm on the deck of the Kong Cafe here on High Bot Trunk Street, Tandon Market area. Right across from the Tandon Church. I'm gonna wait till noon so I can hear these bells, these wonderful, marvelous bells of the Tandon Parish Church. By the way, I ordered a uh, mung bean coconut milk drink uh, because I've had too much coffee already this morning. Oh, that is good. That is so good. Tandin Church, its formal name is the Sacred Heart of Jesus, is a Roman Catholic church that was built in the 1870s. Construction was completed in 1876. Of all the churches in Ho Chi Minh City, it comes only second in size to the Notre Dame Cathedral. It was first painted pink in 1957, then upon its 100th anniversary in 1976, was given another fresh coat of pink paint. Its five bells weigh approximately five and a half tons in total. Finally, just before noon, the bells and chimes that would last more than five minutes began ringing in the hour. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, please. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and other kinds of stuff from East Asia, Southeast Asia, and South Asia. Thank you again. Thanks for your support. Whenever, wherever, safe travels to you. We're going to get through this. And of course, namaste.